Hello again and welcome. This is one of the dead circuit boards out of the Casantes ZT-102. In the upper left where my finger is, this used to be a serial prom. What I've done with this meter is I've downloaded the contents of that prom and I've modified it. The easiest way I've found to do that with these meters is I've just taken a 3M clip and I've wire wrapped that up to a socket and I just plug this into my programmer. And I'll just clip this right over the circuit board like this. And that way I don't have to do any modifications to the meters. So what I've done is I've reprogrammed the limit where the beeper turns on for the 10 amp range. So it used to come on right at 10 amps. And because we're now using this for the micro amp range, I'd like to be able to run this thing up to the full 6,000 counts. So you can see right now both of these meters are in series and we're putting out roughly 92.6 microamps. I'll go ahead and increase that. So normally this meter would be beeping right now. So I've set it to start beeping at 6,000 counts. You can see the Kassun test is still quite accurate all the way up to even 5 milliamps. So I was watching Randomtronics review for this meter and one of the things he was talking about was this being a true RMS meter and that it didn't do a very good job at this. What I've got here on my left is just my generic test box and what I'm going to be doing is applying a square wave. This is uh, AC coupled. This is again 60 hertz. You can see it displayed here. We're roughly 2.5 volts. It's actually 2.477. Now the Fluke 101 is not an RMS meter, so the way you would convert this is it's basically pi divided by the square root of 8 multiplied by the input. So if we take 2.477 and multiply that by pi over the square root of 8, that would equal 2.75 volts. So that's roughly what this meter should read. And you can see it's basically dead on. This is the Fluke 107, which is also an averaging type meter. And again, I would expect it to display yeah, 2.751. So again, quite accurate, but it definitely shows that this is a RMS type meter. So if we attach our Bryman BM869S, of course this is a true RMS meter. And you can see it reads 2.486 or so. So I thought what I'd do is hook up a few of these meters in parallel and then run some more complex waveforms through them and we'll see how this Kassun Test ZT-102 performs. It's the downside of polishing this display so much. You can see we're starting out with a sine wave and all six meters are basically reading the same. You can see I've changed this over to a square wave. You can see the RMS meters are all reading basically 1.97. The ZT-102 is just a little low. And the two averaging meters are slightly high. I suspect the reason this is lower than these is the 3 dB point for this meter I think was something like maybe 3 kilohertz or something. These three RMS meters that we're comparing it against are all good to well over 100 kilohertz. You can see this is still a sine wave but I'm now modulating it starting at the zero cross point and then it decreases up to the 90 degree point and it looks like the two averaging meters are basically reading the same value now as our RMS meters you can see the waveform is a little more complex now I've gone ahead and modulated this with a square wave and this is at 50 percent duty cycle and it's 50 percent modulation you can see our two averaging meters now are reading slightly low. Again, I would expect this to be a little bit lower because there is quite a bit of high frequency content in that square wave. This is now a clip sine wave and I'm still modulating it with a square wave. And again, that's 50% modulation. And it looks like our averaging meters here are fairly close to the RMS meters again. This is sort of a pulsed high and low sine wave. Now you can see a major difference between the two averaging meters reading roughly 0.29 volts 
versus 0.61 for the rest of the meters. This is basically a 4-bit DAC. I'm just ramping up the value. And again, we can see our two averaging meters are about 20 millivolts low than the RMS meters. And this is basically a triangle wave that's being generated off a of DAC. And again, we can see the two averaging meters reading quite a bit lower than the RMS meters. Somebody had wanted me to run a custom waveform at one time, so I posted about the file format, and they just posted a comment with the waveform in it, and that's what this is representing. And it looks like basically the two averaging meters are a little low, and again, if we look at this, there's quite a bit of high frequency content in this waveform, which I'm sure is what's hurting this guy. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully it shows you that this actually is a true RMS meter. As long as you're working with inside of the frequency limit of this, it should be fine. Hope you found the video useful. Until the next test, later on.